reporter. Wayne Madsen joins us. He also has the WayneMadsenReport.com. And we are about to send him on some of his first missions as a reporter that we're not going to be announcing here on air yet, but he'll be covering election 2016 for us uh, in D.C. Uh, and also on the campaign trail. He'll also be investigating shadow government operations uh, and more. Now, going to Wayne Madsen, this is a short segment, long segment coming up. Before we get to his story, evidence points towards Clinton running a parallel outsourced State Department. I want to do that in the next segment. I wanted to first look at Joe Biden, the race. Is Obama waging war on Hillary? What's the inside scuttlebutt on that? Wayne's take on the cruise missiles, the ground troops, uh, NATO announcing it's going to put troops on the border with Syria. I mean, this is biblical level stuff we see building up. So a big overview uh, on the election, on Hillary, on Syria, on the dollar uh, with Wayne Madsen. I want to get your take on that formerly with the National Security Agency. And of course, it's written for some of the biggest newspapers in the country. Wayne, thank you for joining us. Good to be with you, Alex. Where to start? Hillary, uh, Syria? <laughs> Well, yeah, well, of course, we have Hillary. Uh, look, you know, oh, uh, President Obama has never really cared much for Hillary. Uh, you know, when he first got elected, it was a very bitter campaign in 08 between the two. Uh, Obama said, well, I believe in the big tent and uh, I'll get all these people in my cabinet, uh, who, you know, many of them who, who ran against him. Uh, it should be recalled that Joe Biden was a candidate for president also in 2008. Uh, but I, I, I think one could argue whether that was a very good decision. You know, this is what Lincoln did too. He brought in a cabinet of uh, basically uh, people that uh, did not agree with one another. And how can you run a government with, with opposing views like that when you've got sort of a person who doesn't take a strong stand as president? So uh, I, I am not surprised about Joe Biden uh, planning to get into this race. Um, I, I think he uh, is going to be the um, basically the third term for Barack Obama. And, um, and Hillary Clinton and Bill Clinton uh, are basically seething about this prospect uh, of a Biden candidacy. How big's the Russia situation in Syria? It looks pretty dangerous. That that one that one is extremely uh, uh, volatile right now because uh, you've got um, uh, Russia uh, deploying some of its most advanced uh, electronic warfare platforms also in Syria. And I, I, as I wrote today on the website, in an electronic warfare battle between Russia and U.S. and NATO. Um, the, the Russians will win and the U.S. and NATO will lose badly because uh, NSA, which supplies a lot of the data for these radar warning uh, systems uh, and these jamming systems that are used by the U.S. and NATO, these databases are, uh, databases are woefully out of date. Some of the information is 40 years old, believe it or not. And, uh, and, uh, and, th and this is one of the reasons we have so many friendly fire incidents. Uh, for example, the attack on the uh, Doctors Without Border ho Hospital in Kunduz in Afghanistan could have very well been as a result of faulty or old, uh, outdated, uh, emit what they call emitter data, uh, because we know what the frequencies uh, are of all these uh, pieces of equipment, even those, even the radios used by the Taliban. And if it's not up to date, of course, uh, mistakes or uh, errors like that can happen. So a lot of sophisticated equipment. Uh, what do you make of Russia moving into Syria with ground troops and uh, aircraft openly? We know they've been there for a few years, but now they've got ships docking. Do you have any intel on Chinese reportedly uh, being brought in? Yeah, the Chinese and the Russians have, have similar fears to what's going on in Syria. Oh, and what you have in Syria are entire communities now of, uh, of ethnic Uyghurs from Western China. These are Mus Muslim Chinese. And Chechens and other Muslims from uh, Central and the Caucasus uh, region of Russia and Central Asian portion of Russia now uh, setting up entire communities inside Syria. Many of the, these are, are in cities which were vacated by these refugees who fled to Turkey and now are uh, inundating. But Europe. I mean, isn't that politically correct to take Chinese Muslims, let them come to Syria and kill other Muslims and take over? I mean, 
it's okay. They're allowed to migrate and chop people's heads off. A absolutely. Folks are coming from all over the world to the new promised land, Syria, led by our government to uh, kill indigenous Muslims and Christians and take their property. And if you're not for it, you're Islamophobic. Well, I don't gamble at casinos or with cards, but I will gamble for freedom. I will gamble my life. And in this game, I'm all in, doubling down, all the way committed. And that is a good feeling. Monday through Friday from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. Central, we're here. Back 7 o'clock Central. Uh, by the way, I say 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. I am in such a habit of saying that. That's not true. Talk about habit and nobody correcting me. Um, 11 a.m. to 3 p.m. We're live. The fourth hour that I did for about four or five years just burned me out. But a lot of stations kept carrying it. So they'd say, we're not going to carry your first hour. We're going to carry the second, third, and fourth. And so that would be a rebroadcast of the first hour. But some days I would still do part of it or all of it. And I'll still do that sometimes. Like yesterday, I stayed for 20 minutes into the fourth hour with Leanne McAdoo. We hear a lot of special reports. We get to a lot of news that's just broken. We get to a lot of deep analysis. Uh, and it gets hosted by Jakari Jackson, Leanne McAdoo, uh, Joe Biggs, uh, David Knight, uh, Rob Dew, and others. Rob Dew has added a fourth member to the family. They had uh, three sons. Now they have a baby girl. want to congratulate him. That happened last week. So he'll be back in next week. Uh, they're not going along with the globalist depopulation agenda. That's four children uh, in the Dew family now. So congratulations. I do envy you. I want number four as well and number five. Uh, continuing, uh, David Knight will be hosting the fourth hour. GOP leadership on the ropes. Now is the time to jump for the win. This is as big as the presidential election, folks. It's just ultra massive. Uh, thyroid cancer in children skyrockets near Fukushima. Uh, and the Supreme Court says forced vaccines for children doesn't violate rights. Huge news on that front. Giant city being built by multinational defense contractor to war game against American people. I've got the article right here out of the Daily Mail. Uh, it's, it's, it's out in New Mexico. It's one of the places I want to send uh, our reporters like Wayne Madsen. Uh, so that's all coming up. Security, transportation, surveillance technology, test bed. Super creepy uh, when you go look at the details uh, of that and more. So that is coming up with David Knight in the fourth hour. Paul Watson lands in about two and a half hours, a reporter from Britannia. And then now Wayne Madsen is going to be basically a part-time because he's uh, busy running his own Wayne Madsen report, but he will be at least every month going on location, uh, as I just said, and covering things with our reporters. He's doing that in just a few weeks with an unnamed... Uh, story he's going to be working on, uh, and he's also writing articles for InfoWars.com, and that's why it's now more important than ever. I'm not going to risk my life fighting these people to play games, but I need the capital to get more high-quality reporters, investigative journalists, camera people, the men and women we need to fight this tyranny. And the only prerequisite is we get the funds and we find the personnel of every race, color, creed that love freedom to fight against the new world order. So you talk about Big Tent, the info war is it worldwide. But we're also not politically correct. We'll bring on all the different views so people can make their own decision about what's happening on this planet and this world. But we need you to go to InfoWarsStore.com and take advantage of super high quality products at incredibly low prices. Three specials running till next Wednesday. 20% off Prostagard. Liver Shield and the whole liver cleanse is back in. We've got 10% off with free shipping on the water filtration systems at InfoWarsStore.com. We've got 10% off InfoWars Select powered by My Patriot Supply. It's just private label My Patriot. We private label it. We can offer bigger discounts than they can. And we have their food, the exact same packages, just different labels, right by it for sale on the site as well. Their best deals every week updated, six month, one year, fruit and veggie snack mix, mega protein kits, uh, the uh, 72 hour kit, uh, two year supplies, three year supplies. Uh, th this is the best quality I could find with the lowest price, with that conjunction of low price, high quality, <coughs> freshness, dependability. Infowarsstore.com or 888-253-3139.
Also, we need your prayers, and please continue to spread the word to friends and family and neighbors and community, whether you're listening on AM, FM, shortwave, internet, podcast, TV satellite. That's how we reach new people. It is so important that you understand we could be taken down. We could be shut down. So store the shows, record the shows, save the MP3s, and support the local AM and FM station that's carrying our show. Tell people about their audio streams. Because chances are, if they've got us on, they've got other great shows on there telling the truth. So just support the outlets. Don't not be appreciative of this. The globalists are doing everything they can to restrict free speech right now. Now let's go back to Wayne Madsen. Wayne Madsen of WayneMadsenReport.com, Infowars.com, investigative journalist joining us. Wayne, um, I want to now get into Hillary and your big report today. Evidence points towards Clinton running a parallel outsourced State Department. You show the graphs, you show the documents. You're being scholarly when you say you know, that it suggested, I, I changed it to shows on InfoWars and said that was my decision because I've had Tosh Plumley on three years ago, the first to blow the whistle and say, you know, it, they use the import-export group to do this to this multinational consortium she's involved in. Uh, we now know that she's covered that up in the emails. We now know she got money to the foundation to then turn around and reciprocate. I mean, this is pretty much open and shut, but she thinks she could do this because she's got Tony Blair, Bill Clinton, and a bunch of other people involved. I guess the Vatican Bank, the list goes on and on. So you take us to a deeper level of the rabbit hole, break it down for us, go over these charts, and where you think this is going. Well, I guess it shouldn't be surprising that the Clintons uh, are once again have been caught using their, uh, their, their uh, public office for personal enrichment. We know that this occurred when Bill Clinton was governor of Arkansas. We know it occurred when he was president of the United States. And now we discover that it occurred when Hillary was secretary of state, and now she wants to be president of the United States. Uh, you know, when I first heard about this private email, having had worked, I worked at, at, in the State Department Bureau of Diplomatic Security and in, in the information system security branch of the State Department. And there was such an easy way for her to avoid this scandal, all she had to do as the original classification authority state, look, uh, all those emails that were in my, uh, my private server, I declassify them because I had the authority to do it. But instead, she did not do that. She went into cover-up mode. And, you know, it, it's the same old story in Washington. It's, it's always the cover-up in many, many cases. It's worse than the initial infraction or crime, as we know from Watergate. So it's so, extremely Nixonian. Yes, absolutely. So the cover up here, and when you look and then you say, well, why? what was she using this private email system for? And then you find out that she was using it to communicate with, uh, 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 well, Huma Abedin, her personal aide, who was getting a State Department salary. At the same time, she was drawing a consultant salary from a company started by a former Bill Clinton aide, aide named Doug Band. The company's called Tenio, and it just so happens to have on its board of advisors Bill Clinton and Tony Blair. Uh, they're very, very tight with a lot of, a lot of the George Soros operations, uh, and, and then they're also tied in with the Clinton Foundation. So, so imagine this. Bill Clinton is an advisor to Tenio, uh, which is based in New York and has offices all around the world, Yet uh, he the, he uses the Clinton Foundation to hire Tenio as a um, as a as a as a uh, as a, 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 a client and uh, and uh, you know that that's that is just so standard that's standard inside racketeering at its at its worst. So here you are, you're the head of this nonprofit Clinton Foundation. Uh, you're giving. Uh, uh, c contracts to Tenio, yet you're also serving on the board of advisors of Tenio. Uh, that is a classic conflict of interest. And I, uh, although we're dealing with one nonprofit and one profit-making company, I, I would think that the Justice Do Department should look into it's that. It's a total pass-through. I mean, is this not a yeah. classic open and shut? So I'm asking you this question. How would they pull off textbook fraud with hundreds of millions nakedly unless they've been given green light by higher ups that you're untouchable. Well, I think that's part of it. Uh, you know, I mean, there's 
there are laws for us, and then there are laws for them. And uh, sure. uh, you know, and the, the law the law does not apply equally.